Hello guys and welcome back to another PriceCP Roblox Studio tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to learn about recursion and recursive functions in Roblox. We're going to do it in Roblox, but the idea is pretty much the same in any programming language that you use out there. So now let's go to our service script service. We're going to add a script. In our script, we're going to first declare a function. So we're going to say local function. And let's call the function call me has no parameters and in our function we're just going to print hello so maybe we should call this function hello let me change the function name to hello All right so this function is just going to print hello and i'm going to give it a weight or rather a task weight of one second I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna call my function. So I'm gonna say hello. Let me now open up my output window and we're gonna run it and take a look. And there it is, it has printed hello. All right, so here is just a basic function and we're calling the function. Now the definition of a recursive function is just that it is a function that calls itself. So if we wanna add recursion to this function, if we wanna turn this function into a recursive function, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a call to itself, same as this call right here, but it has to be called from inside the function. So we're gonna add it at the end of this function here. I'm gonna paste it in and so basically we're calling the function here and it's gonna execute this line, it's gonna do a task wait and then it's gonna call itself again. So when it calls itself, it's gonna execute this line this line and then it calls itself again. So it's going to keep on repeating the process over and over again. And each time it's going to print hello and it's going to wait for one second. Let's play and take a look. And there it is. You see hello, it's printed four, five, six times. So every time it's going to print hello and it's going to wait for one second and it's going to print another hello because it keeps calling itself. Now your recursive function can also have a parameter an input parameter. For example, we're gonna pass in i here. So when we call here, we're gonna pass in a number, we're gonna pass in zero. And inside this function, we're gonna print hello. I'm gonna insert another line, I'm gonna print your total equals two. And I'm gonna concatenate that with i, which is the parameter that is being passed in. And then here, I'm going to increment my i. So I'm going to say i plus e equals to 1. So I'm adding 1 to i. And then I call the function again. I'm passing in i. So let's take a look at this. When we call it the first time, our i is 0, right? It's going to print hello. It's going to say your total equals to 0. And then it's going to wait. And then it's going to increment i. So i is now 1. And then it's going to call hello again with i, which is now 1. So now we, we enter the, this function again, right? With i equals to 1, it's going to print hello again. It's going to print your total is now 1. And then it's going to do a wait. And then it's going to increment i. So i is now 2. And then it's going to call hello again with the number 2. Then it's going to repeat the process all over again. Let's play and take a look. So there it is, it says, hello, your total is zero, one, two, three, four. Let me stop this. So here it is, hello, your total is zero. Then it says, hello again, your total is one. Hello again, total is two. And then it goes on to three, four, five, and it's gonna continue on forever. So basically here we have an infinite recursion. It's never gonna stop. You can stop this recursion process by adding a condition to it. For example, here we're gonna say, if i is less than or equal to 7, then we're going to move this call inside the if statement. So we're, we're checking for this condition first, right? Let me just reformat my document here. If i is still less than or equals to 7, then we call this. But if i is greater than 7, then it's going to end. It's, it's not going to call the function again. So it's just going to exit out and exit out. 
Let me now clear my output here. But when we run it again, it should automatically stop when it reaches seven. We should not get a total of eight in the output. Let me clear this and then we're gonna run it again. So there it goes. Total is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm not pressing the stop button, but it stopped on its own. So basically that's how recursion works and that's how you create a recursive function. Using recursion can be helpful in certain scenarios. For example, as you have seen in our show, the PCP ChatGPT show, we have used a recursive function to find all descendants of the workspace. Everyone, that's our tutorial on how to use recursion and how to create a recursive function. And we look forward to see you all again in our next tutorial. Take care everyone.